So in this lesson, I am going to teach you how to use the trigonometric ratios to answer questions like this and go through working out like this so that you can now use the trigonometric ratios on right angle triangles to find the sides and the angles. So trigonometry deals with um, right angle triangles and it's when you can't use Pythagoras so you won't be finding that third side given two sides. Um, you are dealing with sides and also angles as well. Now, have a look at this triangle here. We have a right angle triangle and the sides are labeled differently to what you know from Pythagoras. As you are aware, Pythagoras is a squared plus b squared equals c squared and the sides are labeled as a, b and c where the hypotenuse is c. With trigonometry, we label them differently. We label them in relation to the angle here. The hypotenuse is always the longest side. And the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle triangle, which I explained to you in the Pythagoras video. So we are gonna call this hype for hypotenuse. Now, the other two sides are labeled, like I said, according to the angle. So this side here is opposite this angle. So therefore, we're gonna call it op for opposite. And this side here is adjacent next to this angle. So we are gonna call it edge for adjacent. Now, trigonometry, there are many ways that um, your teachers may have told you to remember it. Um, I like to remember it as so ka toa. So, so ka toa. So ka toa. And if I just underline the significant letters here, this represents sine, cos, and tan. And O is opposite, H is hypotenuse, adjacent, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent, referring to these sides. And from Sokotoa, if you remember that word, Sokotoa, or that saying, Sokotoa, you can derive the formulas that you need. So for this one, it's sine theta, because S for sine, equals opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse. For the cosine, for the ka, it's cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse side. For the tan, toa, try to guess what it is based on what I've just done here. That's right, if you've guessed correctly, you'll find tan theta or toa is equal to opposite over adjacent. And these are the three trigonometric ratios, that's what we call them, we call them trigonometric ratios, that you will need to know in order to answer any questions where you have a right angle triangle, you know sides and you know angles as well. Now, you will need to know some functions on your scientific calculator in order to answer these questions. Now, just in case some of you don't know about it, this value that we have here, this theta, this symbol, Okay, this symbol refers to the angle of your triangle. Okay, so on your scientific calculators, you will notice that you have sine, cos, and tan. Now, these are special buttons that you're going to use. Now, if you press sine, for example, you'll notice that your calculator opens up a bracket. It is expecting an angle in there. So, I will do later on some questions. You need to put your angle in here. So, if this was like, for example, 52 degrees, you'll write 52 and you'll close that bracket, okay? So um, I'll explain this through questions and examples because that's the best way of learning. But for now, these are the trigonometric identities um, that we will be exploring. So we are going to look at three different examples where we explore Soka Toa. Now, have a look at the first triangle. Step number one, we are going to label it. It's very, very important that you get this labeling correctly done. So, remember I said to you last time, it's always in relation to the angle. So this side here, the X that we're actually looking for here, this side is opposite our angle. So we are going to call this up. And I said to you earlier that the longest side is always opposite the, high, um, the right angle, which is we call the hypotenuse. So this 10 centimeter here is called height. So once again, the longest side opposite the right angle and our side here is opposite our angle. 
And just to practice, we don't actually need to label this side anymore because we know that we are going to be using opposite and hypotenuse. But just for practice, this side is adjacent next to our angle, so therefore we're going to call it H. So we're going to write down Soka Toa. Soka Toa. And then we now need to decide which ratio we need. Do we need So, Ka, or Tan? Or Toa, rather. Now let's take an example. Let's look at cosine. So Ka. Cosine uses adjacent divided by hypotenuse. We've got hypotenuse, but we don't have the adjacent. So that's not good to us because we need to use something with hype and op. So H and O. If you have a look at tan, you probably have figured out which one to use, but I'm just going to eliminate the others to show you why it's not those. So tan uses opposite over adjacent. Once again, we've got the opposite to find, but we don't have the value for adjacent. So that's not good to us. What we do have is hypotenuse, like I said earlier, and we have to find the opposite. Opposite divided by hypotenuse. We need sine. So I'm going to write down now sine theta is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse here. Now, this step number one is very, very important, identifying which ratio you need. Often I find that students identify the wrong um, um, trig ratio and they do everything else correctly, but no marks for them. So be very, very careful with that one. All right, step number two, we are going to substitute our values in. So sine theta, I said earlier on, theta is the angle. Our angle is 58 degrees. So I'm going to write here sine 58. You could write the degree sign as well if you want to. Opposite, we are finding, it's called x divided by the hypotenuse, which is 10. So we have sine 58 is equal to x over 10. We now need to rearrange this so that we make x the subject. Now, if you know about the triangle, um, you could use that. Often students find it very difficult to rearrange. So I'll quickly show you that triangle. Um, if you, you might have done this in science, uh, they use it in physics for uh, distance, speed, and time. Okay, the triangle works the following way. Above the line is whatever you have above your line. Okay, so in our case, we have X. And then on the bottom here, you have the other two. It's always important to identify what's above the line. So we have sine 58, and we have 10 here. Now, we are looking to rearrange in terms of x. We want to make x the subject. We want to have x equals. So we can cover up the x here, and we are left with sine 58 times by 10, or 10 times sine 58. So if you want to use the triangle, go right ahead. Otherwise, if you're good with your rearranging, if you're good with your algebra manipulation, then you know that 10 here multiplies here to give you 10 times sine 58. And you can also write 10 sine 58, you don't need the time sign here. Okay, and then you just, after that, just simply get your calculators and you knock this into your calculator and you come out with an answer. So let me go grab my calculator. Right, so I've just typed this into my calculator and I got x is equal to 8.4804 dot dot dot. Um, usually it's good to round to a suitable degree of accuracy. So looking at that, maybe two decimal places is good enough. So it would be 8.48 and the units are centimeters. And that's my answer. So two decimal places. Let's have a look at the next one here. So this time we are told we need to find x down here, which happens to be the hypotenuse because it's opposite our right angle. So let's label it hypotenuse. And we have been given the opposite, the side that is opposite to our angle. So this is op. And we can label this just for good practice as adjacent. We are finding x here, which is a hypotenuse, having been given the opposite. So we need to use sine again. Okay, so we will have sine theta is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. Once again, we'll um, substitute our values in. So sine, that's 42, the angle. So sine 42 is equal to opposite, which is 6 over the hypotenuse, which is x. Now, Let's go back to our triangle, because this is where the triangle really comes into play here. Often students find this form the hardest to rearrange, okay? So, above our line is 6, so 6 will go above our line here. And these two will just pop in right here, so sine 42 and x. We need to rearrange this in terms of x, so therefore I'm going to cover up x here. And what's left? 6 
divide, this is like a division sign, so 6 divided by sine 42. So, therefore, 6 divided by sine 42. Those of you who are comfortable with your algebra, then you know that this multiplies here and this divides down here, and that's sufficient for you. Right, once again, we are now left with just calculating this on our calculators now. So let's do this one together on our calculator. Okay, hopefully you can see my calculator here and it's in zoom. So we want to do 6 divided by sine 42. So we press a 6 divide by sine 42. And can you see it opens up a bracket here? Make sure you close that bracket as well. Okay, and you can press equals here and you get 8.966859. Okay, so let's write that down. So x is equal to 8.966859 dot dot dot. Again, you want to round to a suitable degree of accuracy. The last one we've done to two decimal places. So let's do this one to two decimal places as well, which would be 8.9. And this 6 here, because of this being more than 5, we'll increase this to a 7. So 8.97 against the side centimeters, and this has been rounded to two decimal places. So on to our last and final one, which actually finds the angle, so no longer you are finding the side. Um, this one's also going to be using the sine ratio as well. Um, and you may be wondering, when are we going to use the others? The others are exactly the same. They follow the same process. So the examples that I've chosen for you are all using sine, but if they were cos, you'll do the same thing. Nothing changes. It's just what you are given, the information that you're given in your triangle, and um, how to apply it. That's all. But we'll try one of those in a further question later. So have a look at this one now. We are finding the um, angle. So this side, do you remember what this would be called? Hopefully you said hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle here, so height. Um, and we are given this two centimeters here. And if you hopefully you remember what that is, yes, it's opposite our angle, so it's up. And this side is called H. So um, we've got height and opposite, so O and H, again, sine. So sine theta is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. Step number two, which would be to substitute the values in. So sine, now this time we don't have the angle, the theta value, so we're going to call it x. Okay, is equal to opposite, which is 2 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 12. We don't need to rearrange this, okay, because it's, you know, we've got the x here. However, something I need to tell you, when you're finding angles, you will notice on your calculator that you have above those three numbers that I showed you, three buttons rather, um, there's an inverse for every single one of them. So sine has its inverse, cos has its inverse, and tan has its inverse. And it's the inverse that you will be using to find your angles. Now, how to get that inverse? If you see here, the shift, you press shift, and you press this whatever button you inverse that you're looking for. So here I'm looking for this inverse of sine. Okay, so this is very, very important because I want you to know this as I explain the next step. We have sine x is equal to 12, 2 over 12. We want to have x. So how do I get x here? I take the inverse of sine. So I get x is equal to the inverse of sine 2 divided by 12. And on your calculators, you press inverse sine and you can use the fraction button it might be helpful here so this button here 2 divided by 12 close go and close the bracket here and press equals and you have 9.594 so we got x is equal to 9.5940 dot 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 let's round this to one decimal place so um, x is equal to 9.1 decimal place this is a 9 here so this would increase this to a 6 so you get 9.6 degrees and note here that because it's an angle um, we are using the symbol for degrees and that is your answer for your angle okay so let's make use of the other two ratios um, these examples will hopefully give you an insight into them they work exactly the same way as i've done with the sign okay so let's get straight into this one so we have to find x, our angle here, and we are given seven centimeters and three centimeters. So step number one, let's label our triangle. This side here is opposite the angle, so this would be up, and this is adjacent next to our angle, so therefore this is adjacent. And this side is hypotenuse. So just like before, let's write out our Sokatoa. Sokatoa. Now, we have been given the opposite, seven centimeters, 
and the adjacent three centimeters. So which one of these ratios uses O and A? So O and A is used by tan here. So tan uses opposite over adjacent. So we are going to write down tan theta is equal to opposite divided by adjacent. Now, we start to substitute our values in. So theta here is going to be x is equal to opposite over adjacent. So opposite is 7 and adjacent is 3. Just like before, we are finding the angle. So therefore, we have to use the inverse of tan. So x is equal to the inverse of tan, 7 over 3. So let's get our calculators out now. And we're going to press shift tan and the inverse came up with the bracket open and we can use 7 over 3 to show you the here 7 over 3 this time I haven't used the fraction button and it's okay just to show you that you can do it both ways and I will now press equals and I get 66.8 degrees to one decimal place to one dp so my answer for the angle x is 66.8 degrees. So over to this question now. Uh, once again, let's label it. So we have um, here hypotenuse. We have here adjacent. And we have here opposite, because this is opposite our angle. We want to find here the adjacent, because that's our x value to find. So we are going to look for something that has adjacent and hypotenuse because we are given the hypotenuse. So which one of our ratios uses adjacent and hypotenuse? A and H. It is kah, cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hype. Now we will substitute our values in. So cos, we've got the our angle this time, so cos 71 is equal to adjacent, which is x, divided by hypotenuse, which is 12. So we just have this now to rearrange. Once again, we can use our triangle here. So above our division sign is x, so that will go in the top, and cos 71 and 12 will go on the bottom. We want to find what x is, so if you cover up x here, Okay, we will cover up x here as well. So x will be equal to cos 71 times by 12. Remember the bottom, they multiply. Okay, so we have x is equal to cos 71 times 12 is the same as writing 12 times cos 71 or 12 cos 71. And once again, reach for our calculators and we'll lock that in. So this time we are not using the inverse because we are finding the side. Inverse is only for the angles, remember. So 12 times cos 71, close that bracket, and we get x is equal to 3.91 to two decimal places, and that's in meters, and that's our answer, 3.91 meters.